Have you ever needed to define an angled head for your simulation? Well, Veracut's Tool Manager can easily take care of that task for you. In this example, we're going to use Tool 29 as a small tool carried by an angled head. And we've already got the cutter defined. That's the easy part. What we want to do now is add the head model as a holder. I'll add a tool component, choose the holder type, and you can either piece the head together with Veracut primitive blocks, cylinders, and cones, and so on, or if you've got an STL model that you've created from your CAD system, you can simply browse to select the model you want, possibly change the color of it, and then be sure to tell Veracut to do not spin your head model with the spindle. I'll add that to the simulation, and as you can see, this particular head didn't come in with the right orientation. What we need to do is rotate the head 90 degrees and then have it mount flush to the top of the cutter. These movements are handled through the assembly tab. Any combination of translate, rotate, and assemble, and any of the other movement features will work fine. We'll start by rotating the model. Using the rotation center, you can see the point of rotation, and if you need to, click in the field to pick a point to rotate about. Increment for degrees of rotation, and then select an axis. My head is now oriented properly, but what I need to do is position it behind the cutter. I use translate to simply move it up either the length of the tool such as I've done here, or if you like, you can move it up by a larger amount and then use assemble and the mate capability to mate the head to the top of the cutter. Now that we have our assembly the way we want it, what we need to do is figure out how we're going to get this loaded into the machine. What Vericut does is it connects your tool at the gauge point, which right now we don't have any, to the machine's tool component. So we'll set the gauge point by picking in the gauge point field, and then letting the mouse do the work. As you position, you can see the vector moving around. When you get it centered where you need it to, you can click and you get the values supplied for you, or if you know those values, you can key them in directly. Now we need to control the orientation of the head and how it loads on the machine. If I slide this window over, you can see how the real machine looks, and it's probably easiest if I show you the tool components orientation, which is right here at the spindle face. To do that, I'm going to open up the component tree, select the tool component, then right click in the view to display the component axis. And you can see the tool orientation with Z pointing into the head, which is very typical, and X is pointing in this direction here. What we want to do is get our tool to line up the same way. We're going to use the orientation field values to do that. By putting in X, Y, and Z rotation values, what will happen is we will create a coordinate system at this location. I'll start by rotating Y 90 degrees. And you can see the axis system appears. I'll add in the Z rotation next. And looking at the axis system on the back of my angled head, you can see that it matches the orientation of the tool component. That's what ensures the head will load properly. With the gauge offset and orientation set, you can save your tool library, and your head is ready for use. I'll just turn off my axes and play the simulation for you. The first end mill is a face mill, and then our angled head gets called out for use. And as you can see, it seems to be cutting as expected. 
So right angle heads are no longer a challenge.